It's good to be back uh, here uh, with you guys this morning. Um, I was blessed by the hymns. Um, I, I told uh, everybody up here this morning, I, I went to the back. I usually go and get uh, one of the bulletins just to see the order of the service, see wh- where my cue is when I, I'm supposed to jump up there. Um, and um, it just, I, I continually get blown away just by God's hand and how he works things out. Um, last night, I was doing, you know, just some last minute stuff on my, on my sermon and, um, and decided to speak on a particular hymn. I knew it was going to be uh, hymn Sunday, and, and so um, this, this hymn just really speaks to me. And, and, and it goes with what we're talking about today. I was blown away to find it in, in, the, uh, in the bulletin there at the end. It is well. Um, I, we didn't get together. We didn't try and get this thing, you know, um, synced in. or God, right? It's God's hand that... Um, prompted me to use it and for them to sing it. And I'm, I'm, just, I'm just amazed, you know. God is so, so awesome. This is the, the God that we serve. All-powerful, all-knowing God of the universe, creator of the heavens and the earth. This is who we serve. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but thank you for being uh, with us, those that are visiting today. Um, and for First Baptist Church, thank you for, for having me once more. We will continue um, in First Peter. We're doing, I'm just going to read through those first three verses that we did last week, but we're going to continue on through um, verse 9 and talking about this hope, hope for the exile, hope for us. We are exiles. We've, we've been talking about this, that our citizenship, our kingdom is not of this earth. If you're a believer in Christ, if you're not, then you are ball and chain to this world. And, but this is an invitation. Because we believe that our God, there is no limit to his power, we believe that if you're hearing for the first time about this God, man, that he has made it possible for you to be here today. Oh, no, no, no. I made my own choice. I got up this morning. I was just kind of feeling like I should go to church because I did something this past week and I was feeling a little guilty. So I'm going to show up for church. God orchestrated you to be here today to hear his word. And giving you every opportunity to be a part of his kingdom, to be a part of his family. What a great God that is, right? A loving, merciful God, gracious. We talked about that last week, how he gives us every opportunity to say yes to him. It's... uh, Let's read here in uh, 1 Peter. We'll, we'll start off, like I said, in the first couple of verses, just as a point of review, and then we'll pause for prayer and then get into our study. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for the sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for us, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power 
are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Lord, we come before you today and we thank you, God, that you are such a gracious God, so merciful and loving God. Father, that you did not spare your own son and poured out the wrath that we deserved. And he took on the penalty of our sin. Jesus, thank you. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would guide us this morning as we go through your scriptures, as we go through your word, God, that, um, that you would give us understanding, that we may be able to discern truth from what we read and study this morning. Be with us, be among us, God. We love and we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. So last week, we... We talked about who the author is. We talked about Peter and, um, and how he was doing great things one minute, right? Proclaiming who the Messiah was, who Jesus was, the Son of God. Just walking on water, these great and awesome things. And then he goes off and does some not so great things, like chopping off ears and denying Christ. Oh, I don't know him. I'm not, no, I'm not a part of that group. No, three times he denied him. But Je Jesus gives him the opportunity after that to say, yes, Lord, I love you. Je Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. You know it all. I love you. This is Peter. Great things and then some not so great things. But this is later on in life that he's writing these things and he recognizes where he's messed up. And, and sometimes when somebody is telling a story, um, <clears throat> I know when, when I tell a story, sometimes the, the stuff that pertains to me, I, I look, you know, I come out looking pretty great. The, the fish is a little bit bigger, my truck is a little bit taller, um, and, I, and I used to bench press more than I really did. But Peter just reveals everything, warts and all. He is like, this is the way that I messed up, and this is the way the Lord worked through me. And, and so that speaks to us, because we are faulty, messed up people that only through God's grace can we accomplish the things that he asks of us. This is, this is the author of, of this book, and that's why we can identify with him. And he, he goes through, the, through this introduction and, and, and as a pastor reaching out to, to these communities, to these cities where, where the church has been started and he's caring for them. He wants to be a good pastor to them and he's reaching out and he's telling them, hey, you guys, don't, don't get bogged down by the things of this world. He's saying, there, this is, Pete and I were talking this morning about how real this stuff is, right? The decisions that we make here matter. They are meaningful. The, the stuff that we go through and, and, and everything around us, right? We can, we can touch, we can smell, we can feel. This world matters and it's real. But our kingdom and our citizenship is somewhere else. It is with him and eternity. And Peter's saying, hey, Don't cling so tightly to the things of this world. You belong to the living God. 
If you're a child of, of, of the living God, if you are going to call yourself a Christian, then your citizenship is somewhere else. Let go. Let go of these things. But it's so hard. It's so hard. I'm, the bills are just as real this month as they will be next month. Right? And the gas prices keep going up. And, Lord, college for the kids, what are we going to do? Right? These things are some serious things. But our citizenship is of another world. It's in a different kingdom. And Peter's saying, don't worry. Lay those burdens out at the altar and let God take care of those things. Yeah, we're responsible. We do everything we're supposed to be doing as a good citizen, as a good Christian here on earth. But your worries, every single morning, right? Every single morning we take them before the Lord and say, God, you take care of this. I get, I get off on, on a little tangent, sorry. And, but Peter is saying to his people, hey, you guys, be aware. Be aware. There's entrapments in this world that'll make you be anchored in. No. You belong to him. And, and so as he's laying, it's just the greeting, right? It's just the greeting, and he's laying out this greeting, and, and he gets excited. We, um, I love the hymns. By the way, I love the hymns. They are theology in song. There is great truth. Robbie was talking about, just listen to the words, and, and it'll minister to you. And he's right. There is some deep theology in these hymns. And, and Peter just lays out some theology just in his greeting, and he, he bursts into praise in verse 3. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying, hey, you guys, how you doing? Hey, don't cling to the things on earth because we serve a, another God. And then he's just, he's blessed because he's seen Jesus at work. He has seen the miracles and he has received forgiveness from him time and time again. And he remembers Jesus and he's just like, oh, Blessed be Jesus. It hits him. It impacts him to think of his Lord and Savior. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ according to his great mercy. He's so good. He is so good. He has orchestrated it. He has caused me to be born again. To a living hope. What is this living hope? It's not hope like, man, I hope the Falcons pull it off. <laughs> Sorry for the sports analogies and... This is hope in an assured thing. It's guaranteed. It's not, oh, I hope that I am following the right teaching and, I'm, and I hope that, that I can make it there. This is a sure thing. Our hope rests on him taking the penalty for our sin. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Because he rose again, because he's no longer in the tomb, the tomb could not keep him. We can trust. We can trust in that we are protected, and he's keeping us with his hand. Verse 4, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you. This inheritance that we talk about, this hope that Peter is talking about, it doesn't fade. It doesn't lose its value. 
Sometimes it's hard to understand those kind of words because everything here on earth is perishable. You can't drive a brand new car off the lot without losing some value, right? I mean, two minutes after you sign your life away, boom, right? Sorry for, if there's any car dealership guys in here, sorry. (laughs) These bodies, who remembers their 20s or 30s? indestructible, right? We were, we do anything. No consequences. I got a bad hip from playing football without any padding or... No, everything is fading. Everything is perishable. Even gold, the scripture's talking about. We'll get into that in a minute. But not this inheritance. He is keeping it for us. He has gone to prepare a place for us. And it is secure. Verse 5. Who, by God's power, are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time he's keeping us in his hand. There's lots of people that will confess to believing in God. A type of God or, yeah, yeah, there, there's, there's a God. And, and, and if you um, get into creation and, and, the, and the evidence that is in his creation of a creator, oh yeah, that's a good, you know, that's a good argument. People will give you the benefit of the doubt. But what God are we believing in? Because People that will confess to believe in God will also say or have an opinion of what kind of God it is that they serve. Well, my God wouldn't do this. My God would not do that. My God would not take that kind of a stand. What God do we believe in? to form your own opinion, to form your own version of God, apart from the scriptures, it's subjective and it's idolatry. It's an idol that we've created. And so if we really want to know this God, we have to study We have to get in here and do some serious work. Verse 6, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. We rejoice. And this living hope through the trials. Because this thing is so real for us, this living hope, this treasure, this place that God has created for us, we see it and acknowledge it as being real. That the trials that we go through here, Peter's talking about, it's just for a little while. He says, in this you rejoice, Though now, for a little while, our time here, the troubles that you go through here for a little while, you've you've been grieved by various trials. Peter knows what it is to suffer. Him along with Paul and the other apostles suffered for the, for the cause, suffered for the gospel, got beaten, got thrown in jail. He knows what it is to see trouble, to be persecuted. And from this point, he is encouraging 
these people from these churches, but he's encouraging us. And he's saying, hey, I know there's hard times. I know there is sickness, and there are worries, and there are difficulties. I understand you. But rejoice. You serve a great God. You serve a merciful God. If you can just, if you can just hang in there. Follow me. Our inheritance, he is keeping it and it's secure. So that the tested genuineness of your faith, this is one of the reasons that we receive trials. It's a tested genuineness of your faith. Some people, when they get tested, oh, I can't take this anymore. I'm just going to go back to my former life. It was so much easier. So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes through, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor. So that when you are tested, in the end, when Jesus Christ is revealed, praise and glory and honor when we see our inheritance and take, take note of what we've gone through and look back at our time here, when we see him in his glory, we will not be able to hold back. Our praise and glory and honor will be revealed unto him when we see him. And every bit of what we go through here will be worth it. So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This truth, when, when, we, when we think on it, we, when, when we ponder it, it should have an impact. It should move us. It... it it's not this thing like I was talking about before, like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I believe in God. There, there's enough evidence for that, and I, I believe in God. No, it should shake us. Paul talks about living out our faith and fear and trembling. When we look at the book of Acts and the start of the church and what they sacrificed, the, the, the intimacy, the accountability that was there. Everybody was in everybody else's business, but man, I understand keeping your guard up and you know, protecting your, your kingdom and your, and, your, and your stuff and Like Mr. Muskie was talking about a little while ago, man, nothing that we have is ours. We have been entrusted with the things that are around us. We are just stewards. And so we turn those things back over to the kingdom. We turn them back over to the king and say, use this in however way you wish. But... It should be 
when we hear this truth, it should be just as revolutionary as in Acts. It should shake us to the core. That this great God had mercy on us. And because we've been forgiven for much, we run and we tell people about this merciful God. Let me tell you about Jesus. Obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. That is a big deal. That our soul is secure and forever reign with him. It's a big deal. Amen? That, I, don't, I don't know what kind of a setup you guys are accustomed to, but that was a perfect setup for a... <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hey, there, I'll take hallelujahs too. And it's guaranteed. It's not wearing out, you know. There's no termites around your mansion. Or fire ants. Whoa. It's secure. And you're secure. If you've proclaimed to be a follower of Christ, you're secure. And he's taking care of you. And he's walking with you. And there's some stuff that's going to have to drop off. We're going to have to let go of some stuff. I'm not going to tell you when or how or whatever. The Holy Spirit will make those changes. Any changes that we cause are temporary. It's just modifying behavior. And some people get good at hiding stuff too. But the, the, the changes that he causes, the changes that he makes, it's renewing. It's renewing our mind. It's renewing our, our, our hearts. And so he has a place for us a treasure for us that is secure and he has you. And it's evident in our life. And we, if we see his hand sanctifying us, the Holy Spirit sanctifying us while we're here, then man, th those are cues, those are things that are telling us. We get to be with him. The, um, the hymn that I was talking about is It Is Well. I'm sure that some of you are familiar with uh, Horatio Spafford and his story. Um, he was a lawyer in, in um, Chicago. And during the, the great Chicago fire, he lost a bunch of his property, a bunch of his belongings. Um, I can't remember if it was during the fire or before that, lost a son. And... Um, and, and they, his, his family, there was, I think, three girls, four girls, um, and, and his wife. And, and they were kind of regrouping and trying to get themselves together. And um, the family took a trip, and at the last minute, he was held back. And while crossing the Atlantic, the boat that they were in, the ship that they were in, hit another boat. And, and it sunk in minutes. Like 200 and something people died. I mean, it was quick. He lost his daughters. His wife survived. And, he, and, he, and she sends him a, 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 tele, uh, a telephone, <laughs> um, telegram, just saying, uh, survived, just two or three words, don't know what to do. And, and he quickly makes arrangements to go and meet his wife. And he's going across the Atlantic and passes near the same spot where the other boat went down. And at that moment is when he writes this hymn. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, like waves, when sorrows like waves come over my soul, whatever my lot, whatever it is that I'm going to go through, God, 
whatever. Thou hast taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. Where does peace like that come from? It comes from him and him securing us. Our hope is eternity with him. And the rest of the story is um, they had gotten just some time before this trip and just some time before the fire, they had gotten to go and listen to D.L. Moody preach And they were all converted. They were all Christians. And his hope, he was secure in knowing that his daughters were in eternity with him. There is peace that surpasses understanding. There is a comfort that, man, we go through it. We get banged around just like everybody else. But there is a comfort in knowing that we are secure and in his hand. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God, for the work that you're doing in our life. And if we can just make short account of our life, Lord, and and look back at every opportunity that you've given us, where we have taken a detour in our life, when we've walked away or... um, Straight away, God, that you have provided a way through other people, um, for, through different means, God, to bring us back to you. Lord, I pray that if there is someone here today that needs to hear from you, that needs comfort from you, this peace that surpasses all understanding, I pray that you would minister to them today. Lord, we love you and we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.